Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all for, for joining us this evening. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Hogan. I, I'm an environmental scientist uh, with RPS in Belfast and the current chairman of SciWEM Northern Ireland. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to our, our second technical talk of the 2020-2021 uh, technical programme with the programme theme, Water and the Environment, Adapt and Change. So today's technical talk will be on the recently published plan, Living with Water in Belfast, an integrated plan for drainage and wastewater management in Greater Belfast. Our presenters today will be Stuart Whiteman and David Compton uh, of the Department for Infrastructure, Living with Water Programme Division, and will be supported by Richard Bingham of RPS. So before we start, I should note a number of items of housekeeping. Firstly, this event will be recorded and will be made available on the SciWEM website for us to all enjoy in the future. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions uh, throughout the presentation, but do so using the Q&A box below. Uh, and I will read them out at the end and they, during the Q&A session. Um, we expect this presentation and the Q&A will take approximately one hour. Um, so for note, the consultation on the Living with Water uh, in, in Belfast has opened uh, on the 11th of November and will be closing on the 29th of January. Uh, for reference, I will add the link to the DFI consultation page and I would encourage you all to have a look and offer some feedback by filling out the appendix or the Annex A consultation questions and sending your responses uh, into the guys in DFI. But I'll add that into the chat box. Um, so just for note. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, our speakers for this evening. Uh, first up is Stuart Whiteman. Uh, Stuart is a program manager for DFI's Living With Water program. Uh, Stuart has over 25 years of experience uh, working in various roles relating to infrastructure across the Northern Ireland Civil Service. He spent uh, the earlier part of his career as a road engineer before more moving on to work on policy in the area, areas of transport, energy, and water and drainage. Uh, his policy works has included the preparation of social and environment guidance for water and sewage uh, services as part of PC10 and PC15. David is also involved in the development of the Sustainable Water, a long-term water strategy for Northern Ireland 2015 to 2040. Second, we have David Compton. David is the technical lead for DFI's Living with Water program. And similar to Stuart, he has 25 years of experience in both the NI uh, civil service and also in the private sector. David started out training to be a quantity surveyor before changing profession to civil engineering and joined D joining DFI roads as a road engineer where he has worked in a wide variety of roles, including maintenance, capital projects, road safety and traffic control. So since 2014, David has been the technical lead on the Living with Water programme, mainly focusing on developing the integrated drainage investment planning project. <clears throat> and finally, in support, we have Richard Bingham. Richard is a senior associate with RPS and has over 19 years of uh, experience as a specialist in strategic planning, water management, environmental assessment and GIS. Uh, during his career, Richard has worked throughout Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales and Western Australia. Uh, Richard was the consultant uh, project manager working with DFI on the Living with Water programme. Richard and his team uh, of flood risk, catchment management, water infrastructure and environmental assessment specialists supported DFI in the development of the plan. Um, Richard is also a former chairman of SciWay in Northern Ireland back in 2016-2017. So without further ado, I am going to pass you over to Stuart and David and I'm going to go mute. Um, so. Stuart, over to you. That's great. Yes, listen, thanks Thanks very much, um, Daniel. And firstly, I'd just like to take the opportunity to welcome everybody and thank SciWEM for the opportunity to present on the Living with Water programme this evening. Um, we recently achieved um, our first milestone, as, as, as Daniel alluded to there, which was publication of, of Living with Water in Belfast on the 11th of November. That's the draft strategic drainage infrastructure plan for Belfast. However, we recognise it's the start of a long journey and hopefully a journey in the right direction. Um, public consultation will close on the 29th of January, and you know, as, as David alluded to, listen, please, please get it if you get a chance to, to have a glance through the document and, and respond, and, and, you know, if you can. Um, our aim tonight is to provide an overview of the draft plan and work through that, um, you know, work through the work that sort of sits behind the plan that went into its development. Um, just turning to the next slide there. The, um, I'm going to cover the background. 
Um, basically, the plan you really hired Kim in the bin, and David. I'm going to hand over to David. He's going to run through the the exist, overview of the existing infrastructure, the the current issues we have with the infrastructure, the new lip and water approach that we're trying to progress through the plan. Um, I'm then going to cover the some of the outputs that are set out in the plan, um, the financing and delivery, and then next steps. You know, following the public consultation, etc. So just turn to the next slide. That's the other thing, obviously with, with the technical stuff tonight, you will find that sometimes there will be a bit of a pause just because of the internet, internet connections. Did you turn up there? Sorry, David, I can see if you can nod. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Apologies, I'm gonna load it at my end here. We thought this might happen. Um, Um, Daniel, can you confirm you can all see that, Daniel? Yeah, I can see that, Stuart. Okay, all right, apologies. I'll just get down here. Stuart, sorry, I'm back in again. If um, I don't know if that was my internet connection or everybody's. I think it was maybe yours, David. Was David, it? I'm happy to run through, sure, and uh, my bits first here, sure, and then. Um, Grand. So, as, as I said, I'm going to cover the next steps then. Just turn, turn to the background. So, you know, how did this all come about? Well, actually, back at, back in 2013, actually, as part of the work that the Department of Regional Development at the time and Northern Ireland Water officials were carrying out to identify future investment priorities um, for, for water and sewerage, it was becoming more and more evident that issues with, with the drainage, sewerage and wastewater infrastructure um, across really Northern Ireland, but particularly in Belfast, were mounting up. And this backlog was, was, of, of work was basically ever increasing. And we were basically reaching a point whereby, you know, one it, it was it was at such a scale that they couldn't be addressed by Northern Ireland Water um, in, in, in isolation. So as a result, in 2014, the Northern Ireland Executive approved the development of a strategic drainage infrastructure plan for Belfast for, to, to protect against flooding, enhance the environment, the water environment, and grow the, the economy. Um, to develop this plan, the Living with Water program was established um, in 2015. It's an inter interdepartmental program. Um, well, and the aim of that is to develop a draft plan for Belfast. Once the plan for Belfast is done, we're also proposing to develop an integrated drainage and pla um, planning guide that we can use to hopefully develop similar plans for other, other areas and other, other cities in, in, in Northern Ireland, such as uh, Derry, London Derry and uh, Newry. Once this is finalized, um, Yes, and as I said, we're going to do the IDIP. I'll just turn to the next slide. As I said, it's an interdepartmental program. It's led by DFI, um, but there's a, a number of key important partners that we're delivering and progressing the program with. Within DFI, it's been led by Living with Water Division, but there's also Water and Drainage Policy Division. There's DFI Roads and Rivers um, as well, and there's Northern Ireland Water. There's the Department of, of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. There's the Northern Environment Agency as well. There's Belfast City Council and the Utility Regulator. There's also various other stakeholders as well that we're, that we're actually working at working level, but those stakeholders there actually make up the program board that's overseeing the program. Just turning to the strategic context, where does Living with Water sit and um, with all the other policies and strategies that are out there? Well, really at the top level here, We've got the, the key drivers here, which is your protect, hands and grow. You've got your floods directive, which is obviously about water quantity. You have your water framework directive, which is about obviously um, water quality. And then you've got your regional development strategy, which is about growth. So as I said, they're the three, the three sort of key, key drivers for it. And you've also got, which, which really is throughout, should be throughout our work, is the UAE, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, um, about you know, obviously considering climate change, et cetera, and mitigation and adaptation. In 2015, in response to hopefully de delivering these, the, these, these four drivers, we had the executive's long-term water strategy called Sustainable Water. It was a 25-year strategy. I'm sure many of you are aware of it. Um, sort of sitting below the long-term water strategy, then you've got the various plans that are, that are required to, to, to deliver the, the Protect, Hands and Grow. You've got the flood risk management plans. You've got the river basin management plans. And you've got the local development plans. And really, Living with Waters is the vehicle for delivering these plans. 
and you know it it it, it, it delivers the the flooding uh, flood risk management the river basin planning and the the local development planning it's a it's a tool it's vehicle for delivering those in an integrated way in terms of the scale of the plan it it's grown quite a bit um over the years back in 2013 2014 when we were first looking at this we were very much focused on because we're very live, there have been a number of major flooding events in and around Belfast in 2012, etc. And we're very much focused in and around sort of south and east Belfast and the series networks associated with those. So it was very much focused on the, the series networks that feed both the Kinnaker and with uh, uh, treatment works in Hollywood and Belfast treatment works at Duncrew. But as the more and more we assessed this, we realized that actually the problems might exist in that area those areas, but the actual solutions might be elsewhere, up the catchment, for example. So as, as, as the years went on, it, it grew larger and larger. And just turn to the next slide. It, it's, it, this is the scale of the plan now. As you can see, it's, it's, uh, it goes out as far as Carrick Fergus in the north, um, out as far as sort of Hollywood and Dundonald in the east, and out as far as uh, sort of Con Glen and Anderson's town, et cetera, on, on the west there. So the reason being is because you've got the, those, the six uh, dots you can see there, circles. They're actually the, the six treatment works that feed into Belfast Lock. They're all having, their, they're all, all, all clearly contributing to the water quality in Belfast Lock. And then when it came to looking at the actual networks in the areas, the catchments, we realised, as I said a minute ago, that the solutions are often somewhere, or you know, might be to hold water back up the catchment. Although the problem it might exist down the catchment in the city centre. Um, obviously, it's it's a huge scale, it's a huge area. So for assessment purposes. The catchment was the, the area was split into sort of four areas, four study areas. Three of these are land based, and one is the Belfast Lock itself, and, and basically the wastewater treatment works. Each of those areas, in turn, were actually split into sub catchments based on the sort of local, um, basically the local catchments of the various um, rivers and the series networks, and also where, where a lot of the issues and pressures um, we, we, we had identified. Um, just turn to the next slide. Um, David, do you want me to do the slides for you? Sorry, Stuart, didn't realise I was on mute there. It's a good start right. to the, the technical presentation. Okay. Um, do you want to be happy to carry on? Yeah, if you here. want to stop sharing, I can share my slides okay. from here. Hopefully everyone can see that. Yes, thanks, Stuart. Uh, my name is David Compton. Uh, just to take you through some of the existing infrastructure, uh, an overview of the existing infrastructure that we currently have within um, uh, Belfast. Uh, and just looking at how a catchment works. Now, some of this might be self-explanatory, but we think it's important just to go through and uh, explain to everybody that we're consulting with, and that includes member of public, that members of the public, how the existing catchments work uh, and the types of problems that we're facing with the catchment. So very simply, the catchment split into the upper catchment and the lower ends. Uh, we have the uplands and rural bits of the upper catchment and then the urban and suburban uh, feeding down out towards the coast. And when it rains, naturally some of the water naturally sleeps into the earth and makes its way directly to water courses. The rest can find its way via a network of underground pipes into rivers and estuaries, and finally in case of Belfast and the Belfast Lock. Some of this water is carried by separate storm drains and pipes, and some of it flows in and is combined with sewage in through our combined sewage system, and is pumped and treated then at the wastewater treatment works. Most of the most of the, the drainage infrastructure in Belfast is owned by some form of government, uh, whether it's DFI or Northern Ireland Water. Uh, but there are elements of it that are uh, under private ownership, uh, and some of that is being utilised or used by uh, or interacting with the government network. Uh, and a recent uh, desk-based uh, study that we did on the Living with Water program showed that it was around about 87 uh, kilometres uh, of private, of known private drainage infrastructure uh, in the Belfast area. So just going into some of the current issues that we have within Belfast, um, 
under the the protect enhance and grow um, segments of the or key aspects of the plan under the protect aspect um, recent uh, 2018 northern Ireland flood risk assessment indicates that there are around 25,000 properties at risk of flooding excuse me um, identifies 45 flood risk areas 12 of these areas have been identified as areas of potential significant flood risk uh, and four of these areas um, Are we going to lose David? Stuart? Yes, Daniel, just I'm, it's just the internet connections. I, I can't share my screen until David, I think David's screen still being shared. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, back to you. We lost them, um, Stuart, so it's on to you now. Is that okay, Daniel? Can you see that? Yeah, that, that's you. You're back in the mix. Yes, I, I, I'll stay in control, but here I seem to have a better connection than David. That's um, okay. Perfect. So as David was saying there, um, you know, back, back to the strap line of the plan, which is protect, hands and grow. This slide here, basically, this uh, the map on the right there is basically a snapshot from the Northern Ireland Flood Risk Assessment that was carried in 2018. Um, it, it identified 12 areas of, of, of potential significant flood risk which um, basically was based on, there was, it's basically a prioritized list of areas where, and they were basically ranked on the, the level of flood damage at the various sources of flooding, um, whether it be from the coast, from rivers, um, from, uh, from surface water, um, in other words, rainfall, or even from, from out of sewer flooding. So as you can see, the, the, the actual scope of the plan covers four of these areas, Belfast being the largest, but we've also got Glen, Glen Gormley and Molusk, Newton Abbey, and Carrick Fergus. As you can see there, just in some of the numbers there, there's 25,000 properties estimated to be at risk of coastal or flooding from rivers and a similar number, 24,500 properties at risk of surface water flooding within the, the sort of plan area. It's very significant. Just turning to the, the next slide here, this just shows you, this was back in January 2014, I believe it was, and uh, you may remember there was a, uh, it was a coastal event. It was a, it was a high tide that combined with a storm. And you can see how close the levels of the water in the harbour became to overtopping the, the harbour wall. Um, that you're, you'll be aware, some people will be aware now that there's actually a, a, a Belfast tidal aviation flood scheme that, that the department for or my colleagues in rivers will be taking forward for that very reason. If this event, if this same event was to happen in five, 10 years time, it would, would have actually been overtopped and you know, could have caused major major issues for the for, for the city. Just turning to the to the next big area, which is the enhance, which is about the, which is about the environment. There's um, a number of specific issues here. I've just turned. If you look at the right hand side there, that's just a graphic showing um, Belfast Lock. The yellow area is a shellfish protect waters protected area. There's actually shellfish harvested there for human consumption. And one of the challenges is obviously we've got the six treatment works discharging into the in, in, into the lock the inner the inner lock area the size of the treatment works is that is, is dictated by the uh, it basically takes the, the sewage load that those treatment works are dealing with so Belfast being the biggest and as you can see the likes of Belfast the likes of White House the likes of Green Island and even Carrick because of this there's a counterclockwise jar that the discharge that come out of those treatment works are being dragged back in towards the shellfish water so that's one of the challenges, you know, we have to make sure that the shellfish water, the quality of it is, is at the level to enable the shellfish to be, to, to be harvested. Um, just turning to the, uh, the left-hand slide of the slide there, it's not just about the treated effluent. There's one of the, probably one of the biggest issues is the actual amount of overflows. 
um, the, the sewerage systems in Belfast are the, particularly the older parts of it are, are combined, which means they collect both rainwater, stormwater, and uh, wastewater and sewage. And the, the problem with that is they're designed to have overflows, which is basically a, a pressure release valve. Whenever you get heavy rainfall, um, the, 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 they're, they're designed so that they, they will spill diluted um, wastewater into the into the environment. There is a challenge, but if these if these overflows spill more than they should, they become unsatisfactory intermittent discharges. And as you can see, of the 340, 340 known combined sewer overflows in the plan area, we estimate that around 50% are deemed as unsatisfactory. And you, you'll, you'll see some images which, which, which in a second which show that. Um, I mentioned the water quality. It, the water quality is, is deteriorating and obviously for the water framework directive, we have to achieve good ecological status going forward. It's a major challenge. Let's turn to the next slide. Um, this shows, this is actually scaffolding over the Blackstaff River at Boucher Road Plainfields. Um, I'm not sure, I'm sure some of you have maybe been, been at concerts there, but this was obviously only erected for a, for a period of time during a concert. But you can see the sewage with the debris, rags, wet wipes, etc., that that have basically been flushed into the river and have basically gathered on the scaffolding. That's caused by unsatisfactory intermittent discharges from the from the sewage network. Obviously, this is only a small proportion of of the rest of the, the sewage with the debris would make its way through to the to the to the coast. And this is actually sewage related debris that, that was uh, found at White House, just, just in the forest short right near White House treatment works. That looks like seaweed in the water, that's actually sewage related debris. Uh, big, big challenge about flushing inappropriate items, but obviously the condition of our sewage networks aren't, aren't helping either. This also shows a, the, one of the major problems that Northern Island Water has from a maintenance point of view. The, 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 the rubbish there, it was actually rubbish that was recovered from the sewers. So in other words, people are using the sewers as bins. Never mind flushing stuff. They're actually at, basically if not manholes and, 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 and dumping stuff into the sewers. The right hand side is actually um, a fatberg being broken up where you get fat soils and greases. You might have seen some of them in the news. It's not unique to Northern Ireland. It's, it's a common problem throughout the UK. Fat soils and get greases combined with rags and it produce these huge solid fatbergs which block the system. Um, so major, major uh, maintenance headache as you can see from the photograph. In terms of the growth, the third big area, obviously um, there's been a lot of growth in Belfast over recent years, obviously not so much in the last 12 months with the current pandemic, but up until the start of this year, the, 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 tour, you know, the, the amount of cruise ship dockings had increased. The, the, you, know, you, you can see hotels cropping up everywhere. Um, you know, the, it's been really, uh, Belfast has been at really the heart of Northern Ireland's growth. Similarly, you've got, you've got you know, aspirations and, and, and proposals within the various local development plans. The, I should have said at the start, the plan is actually uh, not just Belfast City Council, but it also covers four of the other council areas, Mid and East Antrim, Antrim Newton Abbey, Ards and North Down, and Lisburn and Castlereagh. So that each, of these, each of these councils will be producing their local development plans that will set out um, growth targets, etc. As you can see in the Belfast agenda, Belfast Community Plan, you know, there, there's there's proposals to have six, you know, to increase the population of Belfast by sixty six thousand by twenty thirty five, thirty three thousand new homes, forty six thousand additional jobs. This is all going to increase the loading on the treatment works. That you know, so we have to we have to facilitate that growth. I've mentioned the other plans from from the other the other councils areas. That's graphics just showing some of the other plans. Um, this here graphic is actually produced was produced. It's in the document. This is really an, an indicative. Um, map showing the current capacity constraints across the wastewater systems in Belfast. So that's both the sewage networks and the wastewater treatment works. It was it was produced by Northern Ireland Water in November 2020. Um, basically, those red areas are are above at or above capacity, and Northern Ireland Water will be providing negative responses responses to two new planning applications, and that's simply because their system can't cope. It's it's basically at capacity. The yellow areas are under review and could could shortly turn red as well. And then the amber areas again are, are nearing capacity as well. So that just highlights there effectively there's no green areas there's in, in Belfast. So it just highlights the scale of investment that's that's needed. Just turning to the to the new approach. Um, Living with Water Belfast said was launched in, on the 11th of November 2020, open to the 29th of January uh, 2021. Um, one of the one of the challenges we 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 came across. Early on was 
this issue cycle. And really the, the problem is you have local authorities, plan authorities, or you have local de developers approaching Northern Ireland Water for a connection. You've obviously seen the capacity map I, I just showed a minute ago. It's a challenge because Northern Ireland Water systems are at capacity, so they're providing negative responses. In turn, the, the, the rivers um, are at, you know, the culverted rivers in Belfast are also at capacity and can't accept additional flows. So, you know, you, you, again, the developer then, th there can be negative responses there. Um, that, so you just get this cycle, this vicious cycle of going around. We're really trying to turn that on its head. What our approach is, we're, is, is the living with water approach is, is obviously we recognize that there's a clear need to invest in the actual hard infrastructure. And it's no surprise 80% of the investment in the plan is actually in the hard infrastructure, whether it be bigger pipes, bigger sewers, or improving the treatment works or flood defenses. But we, we also recognize that we want to start looking at more sustainable solutions of the catchment. And that's about holding the water back. And we'll come to that in a bit more in a, in a second. Um, the photograph there shows um, Sydney Park um, and uh, St. Peter's in Sydney. You can see there, you know, a series of steps. That's the series of weirs. That's just basically slowing and attenuating the flows of water, which, which, which in turn will reduce flood risk down the catchment. The solution cycle. This is where we really want to turn it on its head and go the other way uh, and go anti-clockwise. So if we can make if we can make use of green space, blue green space to help store some of the rainwater, that in turn can hopefully free up some capacity in our water courses and culverts, which in turn might enable Northern Ireland water to uh, discharge more surface water, which in turn might free up some capacity in the networks for development. So it's a, a very simplistic approach, but it does work. It does work. I will emphasize, however, this doesn't necessarily affect the sewage. Obviously, we have a sewage loading, a wastewater loading, which will, will actually have to be treated. This is about stormwater. The focus of this diagram is on stormwater, not, not, waste, not, uh, not sewage. I'm just wondering at this stage is I can't see is David are you back with me? Do you want to run through this? Uh, I'm back in sure yeah. Hopefully I can I can stay in this time. If you yeah. just want to run the slides, you've turned the I camera will, and yes. all off then. So um, yeah, if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll go through this. Um, yeah, so these slides were just really to show the um, the type of problems and, and issues that we face uh, within the the catchment. Um, so if we're starting in the upper catchment, you know, uh, poor land management can cause peat erosion and degradation, bog degradation, which leads to uh, sediment, sedimentation of our water courses uh, and rapid surface runoff of water can lead to downstream flood risk. Next slide, Stuart. So looking at a different way, the new approach, uh, looking at um, carrying out works in natural flood management in the upper catchment, uh, buffer strips and tree planting all can help reduce the, the sedimentation and the loss of nutrients to the water, can help reconnect with the, the water courses with existing flood plains uh, and attenuate flows and slow it all down before it starts to, to go any further. Next one, Stuart. Moving on down again into the, the, the uh, rural aspect of it with a similar sort of approach where we want to start to slow the, uh, the flows of water um, where there's maybe excessive drainage uh, leading to nutrient loss and uh, poor land management. But if we move on to the next slide, we'll show the living with water approach, uh, which then uh, includes uh, drain blocking, uh, tree planting, sedimentation ponds, uh, increased vegetative buff buffering of water courses uh, to help uh, slow the, the loss of nutrients and, uh, and sedimentation into the water courses. Next, Stuart. And then just moving down into the suburban area, uh, we have obviously a lot of impermeable surfaces and uh, low biodiversity parkland and culverted water courses. If you move on to the next couple of slides, Stuart, uh, we uh, then see that um, when it rains, um, we have a, a rainfall event, uh, which leads to surface water flooding and river flooding. Um, but if we move on to the next slide, then we can see that this can be approved by reutilizing our, our green spaces, daylighting and opening up our culverts to allow the attenuation of water, uh, which helps improve um, flood, not only our flood defenses, but it also uh, improves water quality. 
we can reimagine our green spaces for greater amenity uh, and have preferential flood paths for our, our water storage. So when we do have that excessive rainfall event or our systems are exceeded, uh, then we can um, design, hopefully design where that water will, will go. Next slide. And just an indication of some of the, the um, flood risk within the urban environment. We have um, canalized water courses and risk of flooding of property. Uh, next slide, Stuart. Uh, we should show the, uh, the flooding event that happens uh, where our properties and infrastructure are at risk of flooding. And then we have combined sewer overflows uh, as part of that flood water. But if we do things slightly different and we re-meander the rivers, uh, come up with tree planting and build in flood defences, uh, we should be able to contain this water. So this water, is, uh, this area is designed to flood. Um, and it should, hopefully the slide will show that the water stays within the, uh, the boundary of the site. Uh, and when the flood waters recede, then it will go back to a public amenity space uh, and uh, protecting our infrastructure. Next, Stuart. Similarly, we have an issue in our um, brownfield sites where it might be being uh, looked at for development, but because of the um, lack of capacity within the wastewater network, uh, they're struggling to get connections to the sewage system. Um, but if we do things slightly differently in the living with water approach, um, we design for sustainable development or uh, sustainable development by storm separating our areas and providing connections to the file network um, and providing greater amenity and uh, amenity benefit within our parklands. Next year. A similar sort of issues in, in, the, in the coastal area where we have coastal flood risk, we showed the slide earlier of the, the tidal risk that happened in Belfast in 2014. Um, and if we move on, we can see the uh, living with water approaches to build flood defenses and tie that in with uh, coastal management and uh, beach replenishment and nourishment. Next slide. Well, that covers the sort of blue green aspect of it, uh, but there's also the, the, the underground um, buried infrastructure that we talked about. Uh, and generally we have a, a combined sewage system uh, within Belfast where the storm water is going into the, being mixed with foul sewage um, and being taken to the wastewater treatment works. Next shirt. When it rains, obviously uh, the overflow in these systems, the combined sewage overflows, need to discharge somewhere as a pressure release within the system and will lead to combined uh, sewer overflows into the water courses. Next, sure. Doing it slightly differently, if we can provide capacity within our water courses uh, to allow for surface water and storm separation, we can just uh, save on uh, pumping and uh, treatment costs because it's just the foul sewage that is going to the wastewater treatment works and the surface waters uh, and the storm drains are just discharging to our rivers and water courses and obviously that's the park that we showed earlier which flood and we've now designed that for exceedance uh, we've designed it to flood to protect the infrastructure that we have. And then moving on John just as that uh, those combined sewers and foul sewers go to the wastewater treatment works a number of our wastewater treatment works are at are operating over capacity um, and are, we have issues with the, the wastewater outfalls. Um, so if we do things slightly differently, we, need, we know we need to upgrade our wastewater treatment works, um, could provide capacity for new development and the existing network as it is. Plus we also need, know that we need to extend our, um, our wastewater treatment work outfalls in Belfast Lock. So just going on then into some of the, the, the methods we use to develop this integrated drainage investment planning approach. It was a four stage process that we went through uh, and it's contained within the plan. Uh, we've covered the study areas uh, that we looked at, um, long list of opportunities and initial analysis. Now, three of these, these stages are complete as part of living with water already. Uh, and the fourth stage is currently ongoing. So Stuart's covered the, 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 the catchment areas already. And the idea of these was these were broken up into smaller catchment areas to make it a more manageable uh, area to, to look at. Uh, the drainage catchments of these didn't tie up exactly with the sewage drainage areas or the watershed boundaries of the water courses. So it's a bit of a, a, an amalgamation of boundaries based on the drainage area, the watershed boundaries, plus then the, the issues and pressures that we identified throughout the catchment to try and make it into a manageable area. 
And then we set up technical working groups for each of the study areas. And the idea being that, that technical working group would change uh, based on the area that we're in. Uh, so the likes of uh, partners in Belfast Hills, uh, Belfast Hills Partnership, and National Trust, et cetera, uh, and the councils would change as we move through the, the catchment. So looking at the, the, the uh, looking at one study area in particular, this is our Black Staff study area. Technical working group was set up uh, to look at the issues and pressures identified. Uh, and what we're talking about is strategic issues and pressures within the, the example. We weren't looking at small localized ponding issues. We were looking at uh, water quality issues, invasive species, flood risk, uh, and then development pressures as well within the system. Um, and then opportunities um, within the, the system that uh, within the catchment that already exists. Uh, as a result of that, we moved into looking at um, opportunities that existed within the um, the catchment uh, and came up with a list of catchment based examples or catchment based objectives uh, within the catchment that would specifically target those pressures and issues uh, that we identified. Next one, Stuart. As part of this, we developed a long list of um, options that could help address some of the, um, the issues within the, the, the Living with Water program. Um, policy and planning issues, which were screened in the start because they were more national levels. We knew we need to look at uh, policy issues in terms of adoption of SUDs, et cetera. Uh, and then into the blue green infrastructure and hard engineering. And then this was then uh, shortlisted by a, a two stage uh, screening exercise where we looked at would the uh, function work within the, the catchment and then geographically where would it work? We find that whenever we did this in a, in a large uh, workshop with our stakeholders, uh, based on a desk-based exercise, it didn't necessarily work because everybody was just pointing out green spaces and saying, oh, that's a perfect place for a swill. But whether that was in relation, whether it was the right level uh, and whether it was close to any water courses that we could discharge into. So it was a geographical screening as well of the, of the exercise. Then moving on, we looked at our opportunities and we started to optioneer those list of uh, opportunities that came through in those categories that we were selecting. Um, and starting with a do minimum option, we built these options up um, just to try and maximize the storage potential within the catchment. Those opportunities and those that designing, uh, that optioneering was based on, the, on these design principles, just going from everything from managing flood risk at source right through to providing green space where appropriate, uh, and then looking for cost-effective uh, solutions. And then carrying out an initial analysis of these schemes to try and come up with the most living with water type uh, objective uh, or scheme that we could, could help solve the, the problem. And we did this using a, a multi-criteria analysis, uh, which looked at a number of issues. And the main focus was on the, the, the primary objectives of protect, enhance, and grow. But obviously looking at secondary uh, objectives of social inclusion, design for exceedance and natural environment, um, and then getting into the, the technical and feasibility of actually building some of these options. The idea being that um, the local weight, uh, you can see over on the right hand side there, would change depending on the area that we were in. So for example, we're moving into London Dairy Dairy in the next uh, process of the plan. The cultural heritage might, if you're near the dairy walls, might need more weighting in terms of uh, um, local weight there than it would do in, a, a, in another area of the city. And then just moving on, the final stage of the, the new approach, uh, the stage four, is, which is ongoing at the minute, uh, is just looking at detailed environmental modeling uh, and integrated uh, drainage modeling. Um, which will hopefully then lead to new uh, appraisals and new uh, approaches to taking uh, looking at integrated appraisals and business cases and how we develop schemes, uh, not just that will meet one organization's um, cost benefit analysis, but looking at how we appraise a combined and integrated holistic scheme um, rather than just one uh, for one organization. Which will then help us take forward opportunities for taking forward into planning, modeling, uh, and taking through to final uh, construction. And it's worth pointing out that any schemes that are coming out of this uh, plan at the minute, they're just potential schemes, they're almost just concepts, uh, but any schemes that do go forward obviously will need to be subject to further detailed optioneering and design, uh, further integrated environmental assessment and consenting. 
So we'll move on to the next slide. It's just the living with water approach blueprint almost for the catchment. Uh, again, starting in the upper catchment, starting to slow the flow of water through the catchment, um, providing multi-benefit green space, um, which allows for then sustainable development by storm separating our sewers where possible, uh, and then upgrading our sewage and wastewater treatment works. That's me, Stuart. I want to hand back to yourself then. You're on mute, Yeah, Stuart. thanks, David. Uh, just turn to the next slide. Just want to turn to the plan outputs. Um, apologies, spoke just for the technical difficulties there. These things happen with the, with the internet. Um, I'm just going to give a quick snapshot of the outputs that are set out in the plan. The plan is there, as I said, and you can view it at your own leisure. Um, but there was effectively three categories of output. There was policy measures, which is, is uh, David mentioned there, the likes of sustainable drainage. We want, to, we want to resolve some of the issues around the adoption maintenance and design of, of, of softer sustainable drainage systems. Um, Catchment-based solutions, which is really the, the three land-based study areas, you know, that's 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 a combination of your blue-green stuff that, that David had talked about and your hard engineering stuff, which is below ground. And then the third area is the upgrades to the wastewater treatment works. Just touching on the, the policy measures, there's really three categories of, of, of policy proposals that were that, that we've identified as a priority through the plan. First one is SUDS. The photograph in the top right is actually of Clanley Boy, the rain garden in Clanley Boy Primary School, which Northern Ireland Water uh, completed a couple of years back. Um, really, we want to do that, but on a bigger scale. The important thing is, it's one thing fixing the problem through the plan. We, do, we don't want um, future um, development plans and future development, residential development, increasing flood risk any further. So we do recognise that sustainable drainage systems have a, a, a really important role to play moving forward. Um, to in terms of flood risk, future flood risk management in Belfast. Um, natural flood management is the second area, and really, um, it's really about, you know, naturally managing um, excess water, you know, up the catchment, up at the top of the catchment. But it's, if, if you let the water get down into the city centre, it's too late. You're having to build, build big flood walls. This is about trying to hold it back, attenuate it, slow it down. Um, one of the challenges to date, most of the concepts that we've come up with tend to be focused in around publicly owned land, whether it be parks owned by the councils, whether it be land owned by National Trust or housing executive or whatever. And we recognise as you move out the catchment um, into the sort of more rural area, you're getting into more private landowners. And we need to find a mechanism for how we might be able to incentivize um, for some of that land to be used for flood risk management purposes. The third area which is really important is really the role of living with water going forward. We don't want this to become a one-off thing. We want this to become a, 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 a the, the business as usual approach in the future. So David mentioned dairy. We are hoping to, to roll out roll this out to other parts of other parts um, of Northern Ireland. Turning to the second category, which is the cassette based solutions, there's really the three study areas. As David said, um, this is the, the black staff. Um, we actually each each of the sub the black staff actually had six sub catchments. And each of those sub catchments were assessed in turn for the issues and pressures, the opportunities, and then scheme concepts were developed. And um, this is just showing you, this is zoomed out to show you the whole of the black staff. But as you can see there, um, there's various schemes we've identified. And some of the schemes might be we've, we've identified potential partners where, for instance, if you look at Valley Cell and Plant Fields, number one there, which is I don't know if you can just see there in the top right, that's there's, there's a basically a proposals for an, an urban villages scheme being funded by the executive office and to be delivered by Belfast City Council to basically regenerate those playing fields, 3G pitches and things like that. We're hoping next year to work along with, 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 with the council and the executive office to actually extend that scheme to include works to the, to the river that passes through the, through the park. And that, that's hopefully going to include a bit of daylighting, basically, uh, basically removing the pipe, the pipe section of the, some of the pipe sections of the river and letting the river basically um, flood a small element of the of the green space whenever you get a heavy rainfall event. So basically, you're you're, you're using that green space to hold the water back and and, and, and hence dampen the, the 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 flow of the water down the down the down the down the culverts. Um, just turning to the other areas, that's the Collins Water and like an embankment study area. Again, there's been a series of concepts identified. These are set out in the plan in a bit more detail, and I say each of the sub catchments is set out in the plan as well. David said these are a lot of these are concepts and need to be worked through detailed appraisal. 
There's also sewage improvements needed throughout this as well. And that's this is the third area. This is the North Foreshore area. Again, this this was split into a series of sub sub catchment. And again, we had the we have these concepts. And we recognize one of the challenges we had was obviously all joking aside was with COVID and, and the engagement during, you know, in developing the plan in the latter stages of it. So we, we want to use the public consultation to identify any any other opportunities there might be because we recognize yeah you know we're, some of these areas we're not that familiar with and we may we may have missed some opportunities some issues and pressures so through the public consultation we're hoping to that some of the stakeholders will and some of the consultees will hopefully identify some areas that we've that, that maybe we have we, we we haven't we haven't taken into consideration and it may well be some of the proposals just aren't aren't workable and there's very good reasons why and again if people want to provide that provide that information through the consultation that they will be welcome just turn to the last category the third category of output and it's really the upgrades to the wastewater treatment works doesn't matter how much blue green stuff we do in the catchment we're going to have a sewage load a wastewater load that has to be treated and in fact the more sewage improvements we do um the photograph earlier of the black staff and the scaffolding river or the scaffolding and the sewage load of debris you know, if we if we do the improvements that are needed to the series network, that series needed debris will stay in the series system and make its way through the treatment works. That's going to increase the loading of the, um, on the works. Hence, we need it. We need to increase the capacity. Not only that, there we've got to, we've got to facilitate growth. So I mentioned that you know the obviously the the local development plans and, and the plans for growth that the various councils have. So there's really four big um, proposals needed to the treatment works. Um, number three I've already covered. That's increasing the capacity. Number one is about is, you know exploring opportunities to see if we can actually move some of the moves some of the transfer some of the sewage load away from Belfast and out to some of the other treatment works. And the reason for doing that is just for cost it's, it's cost effective to do so. It's Aussie land is at a premium. Belfast treatment works is is basically at, at capacity. There's very little um, opportunity um, to extend the site. So if there's opportunity to extend some, if it's more cost effective to increase the size of some of the other treatment works, that's what we're exploring. So the first thing is, is a series of series loads shown by the, the arrows there with, the, with, um, with number one. Two is about the upgrades actually needed to five of the treatment works. There's, there's levels of treatment that are required for uh, to meet the, the quality standards in the water set out by the Water Framework Directive and other directives such as the urban waste water treatment. So it, five of the treatment works will have to have enhanced levels of treatment. So there's a capacity increase, but there's also the, 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 the wastewater that's collected has to go through more stages of treatment before it's discharged in the environment. And David mentioned number four, which is really four of the treatment works. The outfalls have to be extended further into the lock. And as you can imagine, that's a major, major uh, civil engineering project. Um, and that, that, that will be done towards the end of the programme. Just looking towards the, the sort of short term proposals and opportunities. Um, within the within the, the, the sort of Glen Macken sub catchment, which is shown here, we recognise there are a number of schemes that that will, that will have to get off early and, and, and happen early in, in the in the program. One is the, the sort of Glen Macken, uh, the Sicily Park scheme, um, flooding. There's been flooding, a history of flooding in Sicily Park, Sicily Park since sort of 2012, and there's a major upgrade needed upgrades needed to the to the series network, including a possible tunnel down Boucher Road. So. We recognise that that work will have to be done in the short term. Similarly, moving towards the, uh, the sort of Conswater Legum Bank study area, here you can see the Belfast Tidal Scheme as well, which is which is happening in the short term. Again, I, I showed you the photographs of the harbour and how close the harbour walls were to being topped over topped in January 14, and also work that's actually already started. Belfast Treatment Works. As you can see, there's there's very little opportunity to to to, to basically extend the site. Um, there's a there's a there's a an interim measure that's, that's being done to to basically provide a bit of uh, increased capacity in the short term, um, on the site, and that's phase not. There's actually three phases planned for for Belfast Treatment Works over the over the lifetime of the plan. This is some just just to give you an idea of some of the concepts and some of the blue green things that we're hoping to do. Um, this is just a mock up of the Fourth River. And if you're familiar with this part of town, this part of uh, Belfast, um, Springfield Dam's just down here, down at the bottom. Um, and I think that's the Bally Martin Road. Um, and this is a, a sort of an invest in eyesight here. Um, just to show you what a mock-up might look like. 
Um, there's a greenway. You might have seen it in the news. There's a piece for greenway being being that's going to be delivered by Belfast City Council. We're hoping to work with Belfast City Council and do works to the rivers at the same time to basically provide a bit of storage, a bit of attenuation, and make it in the amenity for the uh, you know as well. So as you can see, you know there you know, when you start to see it come together like that, there you can see that you can see that not just the the flood risk management benefits, but the environmental you know ecosystem and uh, and amenity benefits. Similarly, I mentioned Bally Sill and Plainfields. This is Bally Sill and Plainfields in this area here. Again, we're hoping to work with the Urban Villages scheme um, to do a bit of uh, sort of landscaping through the park and a bit of daylighting of the covers. There's, there's two or three water courses that come in, in, in the vicinity of the park. And by doing that there, that will hold the water back during a, during a, rain, during a storm event, reducing the surge down, down the down the down the culverted water courses further downstream and uh, which currently are at are, are, are a source of, of flood risk. This here is actually up in in in, in Derry Stroke, Stroke London Derry and it's actually there's a, a, a linear park it's Gallia linear park if any of you are familiar with it um, and really what we're looking up there is something similar we're, we're, we're looking at opportunities to basically naturally manage and hold the water and if just to show just to show a visualization you can see how you can make this into a community asset. It does flood risk management again, but it has the, the social, the amenity, the environmental benefits there. Just turning more to the longer term part of part of the, the proposals, the uh, there's a lot, there's a critical path that we have to follow. You can't obviously do upgrade all your treatment, you can't upgrade all your sewage systems at once before you upgrade the treatment work. So there's a there's a, a critical path that we've that we've developed. And there's a lot of modeling work that needs to, you know, a lot of the blue green concepts might need to have to be, might need to be, to be completed in advance of some of the hard engineering. I won't go into this in detail, but um, it's just to show you that there, there are there is stuff that we'll be doing in the short term, but there's a there, there, a lot of the stuff in the middle and, and latter stages of the program will have to follow this critical path. And this is just showing you a sort of a, an outlook of the 12 year program. There's the policy stuff at the start at the top. We've got the green box is really important. That's the planning, modeling, design, and appraisal work and consultation and community engagement that'll be needed to take the concepts through to through to, through to through to construction. And then you've got your, your the three aspects of construction. You've got your catchment-based blue-green stuff, which is your works to your rivers, the fourth river and the valley cell that I showed you there. And then you've got your hard engineered measures, which is your bigger sewers, your flood defenses, and then you've got your finally though you've got your your treatment works. Just moving to financing and delivery, it's a huge undertaking. It's 1.42 billion pounds. Um, it's huge. It's over 12 years what it's needed, and you know we recognise the challenges of providing that level of investment in the, in the in the current economic climate. But can we really the question is can we afford not to provide not to provide that investment because the 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 flooding is going to intensify, the pollution is going to intensify, and the, the development constraints could intensify. Just this is, just shows you the, 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 the an indicative profile going forward for the first four years, and because of the modeling work and the development work, it's it, it takes a couple of years before it sort of ramps up. By year three, going into year four, we're really getting up to sort of full delivery. And just in terms of the next steps, I mentioned we've got the public consultation closes on the 29th of, of January. We will then review the consultation responses and prepare a final plan and bring it to the Northern Ireland Executive for approval. And uh, following that, then as I mentioned, you know we're we're really in the delivery from April. Um, I also mentioned that we're we're looking at we're part of a lot of this is a Belfast plan one, with a number of pilot projects, including Bally Sill and Fourth River. One of those pilot projects is actually is actually up uh, in the Glenalla Glengalley Linear Park that I mentioned in Derry, Stoke London Derry earlier. So um, we do. We are going to look at hopefully look at dairy in, in, in more detail, and then possibly in Uri as well after that. And that's it. And thank you for listening and, and bearing with us with our technical difficulties. So I hand back over to the to Daniel. 
That's great, Stuart and David. Thank you very much. That was absolutely fantastic uh, presentation. Very informative. Some really, really nice visuals and and a, and a clear message of what is actually needed, both soft and hard engineering solutions to alleviate the capacity issues that were in the network. So, anyone that's, I'd encourage anyone that has a question to put it through the Q and A box. It's beginning to blow up quite a bit. So, um, it's actually your presentation has actually stimulated quite a few questions. But I suppose I'm going to kick one off uh, just when you talk about funding um i see the figure 1.4 billion um how will this all be funded and uh, what happens if you don't get funding with the lumen recession that everyone is talking about no um daniel very pertinent uh, question our role really is to set out what's needed and we're in a real challenge at the minute um particularly uh, you know we can see no end of this pandemic at the minute but this is a 12 year plan and really our role is to set out the plan and what's needed um, to, to, to resolve some of the major main issues in, in Belfast. Um, the, the, one of the challenges we have at the minute and we recognize that is that, um, you know, over 70% of Northern Ireland waters funding continues to come from, um, from, from government um, because obviously we have no, no, no charges here. Um, so while that continues, there, you know, we will be that this will have to compete. We recognize this will have to compete with other public priorities, whether it be health um, or education. But, um, you know, the, the one of the other challenges we have as well that we were hope we were hoping to have a three year budget, multi year budget. We've been working very much on one year budgets re recently, and one year budgets are, are a disaster as in terms of trying to plan for, plan for the longer term, deliver larger capital schemes such as this. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like we're in the one year budget for next year, but we're hopeful that we take this to the executive um, it's included in the new decade new approach living with water um, it's it's um, which was published um, in January, so it is identified as a, a as an executive priority um, there's been a, um, the minister, our minister uh, has, has, re has received a lot of positive positive support from our executive colleagues um, I recently briefed our. The, the, the committee for, for um, infrastructure on this a couple of weeks ago. And again, they all recognize that it's needed. But just in terms of answering your question, at this stage, all we can do is make our case for, for investment along with, uh, but we recognize it's competing with other, other public priorities at this stage. Very good. Just on the same vein, um, the 1.42 billion, is that Belfast or NI wide? There's a couple of questions in this. Asking. This this is Belfast at the minute. Although the uh, if I, if I go back just to show you maybe um, I'm still sharing the screen. Um, the two you can see there. There's the the land share of the investment. Sell over seven hundred million as on wastewater treatment works. So that's that's across the five stroke six treatment works in Belfast. You have then 480 million in series networks. There, there might be scope with the, within the 200 million that's here marked there for some of the blue green stuff. I mentioned that we're, we're already doing a study looking at looking at, in, in dairy, looking at um, if, there, if there's opportunities to do this approach in dairy as well. So um, the, the 200 bit is, is it wouldn't be NIW money, that would be money from the from the department. So there might be some of that 200 could potentially be other parts. Of, of Northern Ireland, but um, the, really the land share is Belfast, yes. It's worth saying as well that Northern Ireland Water for its PC21 business plan, which is uh, covers 2021 to 2027, um, it, 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 it's, it estimates that it requires 2 billion. Um, out of that 2 billion, around 450 to 500 million is, it would be for living with water. So it's around a quarter of, in Northern Ireland Water of basically earmarked around a quarter of their money across Northern Ireland is needed for living with water in Belfast. Very good, Stuart. Um, there's a couple of questions, um, general themes around the, the Belfast sewer system. Um, so Belfast sewer project was to increase the capacity of Belfast sewer system. And that was done only 10 years ago or so. However, there was a figure earlier about 50% storm overflows deemed unsatisfactory. So is this scheme not working or did it not envisage growth and increased flows and hence was it not designated to allow for extra capacity capacity and future proofing? Yeah, no, very, very good question. The, the Belfast Tourist Tunnel did do, it, it, it was very successful. It did what it was supposed to do. It dealt with um, combined sewer overflows that were actually going into the River Nagan and also 
major right of sewer flooding around the lower Ormal, lower Raven Hill areas back in the sort of early noughties. Um, so it has been successful. The, 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 a lot of the CSOs, the combined sewer flow problems that we've talked about in the plan are actually outside or away from this, this tunnel. And actually what we're proposing to do is extend that tunnel to catch those and collect those. So the black, the series of the debris that was shown in the black staff photograph, that's, you know, we're, what part of the proposal is to actually extend that sewer tunnel out to that location and, and collect some of those unsatisfactory sewer overflows that are currently going into the water courses and putting them into the storm tunnel that will then go to the treatment works. So the answer is yes, back whenever they did uh, the, 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 the sewer tunnel or the sewer project back in um, the noughties, that it, it was successful, but it was looking at another part of Belfast. The, the, the problems I identified are actually in a slightly different location. Oh, very good. Um, just quite a few comments about a uh, brilliant presentation and all this makes really, really good sense. Uh, but it seems that until the policy changes that we can't have upstream storage or better land management. Um, so as a general, have you any, is there an idea of when policy will come through to, to assist with that? Well, we're using the document as a vehicle to try to prioritize the policy. And we could have listed, we could have had a wish list of policies in the document, but we chose not to. We chose to have what we thought were the three key areas, and that was trying to res trying to, to sort of resolve some of the issues around the, the design, adoption, and maintenance of, of sustainable drainage systems for new developments, natural flood management, um, which is really about how do we incentivize private landowners to, to use their land. It may, may require a grant scheme, may require some sort of incentivization. The policy has to be worked through on that. But um, no, as I showed in my my, my slide there, the, um, the, we would hope the policy work to be uh, completed in the early part of the programme. So, you know, sort of the programme sort of kicking off in April. So as you can see, the, the policy is up front and centre there. Um, and then straight in on the, will the new post-Brexit new agricultural policy provide required finance for upland natural flood management? I think you've sort of covered that um, that's, yeah, already. So oh, that's good. Uh, God, there's so many questions here. <laughs> I'll take a couple more. I won't take any. Um, if you want to throw a couple at David and Richard as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stuart, I'll let you, I'll let you decide. Um, so there was... Uh, there was one question actually is a very, very good one. What percentage do you think, and I think you sort of covered in one of the slides, uh, what do you think the solutions, how did it split between blue, gray, uh, sorry, blue green and hard engineering? Um, I know like hard engineering is required, uh, but you know, for us environmentalists, we sort of like to think the blue green, uh, what sort of a split would you reckon it would be? Yeah, I think, I think we've got to be very realistic here. Blue green isn't, isn't the panacea? It's not going to solve all our problems, but um, it can. You can many and many of ways we've looked at the blue green as, as a way to future proof our plan um, for 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 climate change, etc. Hard engineering we, we accept has a role to play, and the hard engineered systems do need to be upgraded and increased in size. But the blue green um, it can basically can, can be delivered alongside that to compensate that and um, to to to, uh, to basically. Um, help it and it's really about the whole design for exceedance which David alluded to. The blue green has a real role to play there so whenever you're hard it, we, we can't build sewers to, to, to deal with every eventuality in terms of in terms of in terms of intent you know re rainfall intensities but we can at least design our system so that whenever the systems are are exceeded um our blue green can help can help manage the flows. Is there anything, David or Richard, want to add to that? Another point I'll share as well is remember with, with the Limith Water approach, we're looking at maximizing the catchment first, and then that's also maximizing the multi-benefit and the opportunity for joint working with anyone else that wants involved. And you know, throughout the past couple of years, the amount of bodies that have come on board interested in the as interesting parts of the work, such as, such as National Trust, Belfast Hills Partnership, Housing Executive, uh, and maximizing that, and then what can't be dealt with, um, yeah, then it's back to traditional engineered solutions, uh, but also, like you say, designing for resilience, and design for exceedance and adaptability, so planning properly for the future and not just today's problems. 
think as well, sure, just you'd mentioned during the, your presentation just about the, the biological load that's going to the wastewater treatment works. Uh, I think it's very important to notice that our um, the blue green infrastructure won't have any impact on that biological load that needs to be going to the wastewater treatment works. We can't store that in a green park somewhere, um, but obviously the amount of water we can take out of the system, uh, fresh water effectively that's been mixed with sewage, if we can take that out, attenuate it within the, 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 the green spaces and our parks through blue green infrastructure, uh, that reduces then the amount of storm water that's going uh, or dilute sewage that's going to the wastewater treatment works and hopefully reduces the amount of storage that's needed in our wastewater treatment works uh, to store that water during a storm event. So it really just depends the amount or the percentage of blue green infrastructure depends on how much we can get in. Uh, hopefully that will reduce some of the costs that uh, within the plan as well then. First then just David, add to your point there and indirectly it sort of does help because if you provide blue green, if you, if you provide increase the capacity theory of the theory of your rivers by doing a bit of attenuation, you may provide opportunities to take some of the stormwater of this combined system, which in turn will reduce the amount of overflows. In other words, and in other words, keeping the stuff in the sewers to the treatment works, um, which in turn will actually increase the need for bigger treatment works. But um, but you're right, it's, it's strictly speaking, the blue green is, is really about stormwater. Uh, very good. Um, I'll take two more questions. I know I'm unconscious of the time and I'm sure everyone has to want to get to their dinner, but there's a couple of general theme along the way. Will this plan address all flooding problems across Belfast or is, um, I know that it's planning for the future, but is this the ultimate solution or will this always be, will it always be, well, I suppose any place that's at risk will always be at risk, but how is that going to help? Um, Let me just start this off and I'll hand over to David. The yeah, really, the plan, yes, the plan, the, it, it, the focus of the plan also is on protect hands and grow, so it is about flood protection. But you know, it's not about dealing with every say every every bit, you know, bit of ponding on the carriageway. And I'll just hand over to David in terms of the this was we had the right people around the table whenever we were looking at the integrated investment planning process when we we're ma ma sort of mapping out the issues and pressures, David. Yeah, yeah, it was. We identified those flood risk areas and those flood uh, problems. Um, and it may well be that we, we won't be able to address all the, the flood risk within the catchment or within those areas, uh, but we may be able to reduce the severity of those flooding uh, events that happen. Um, for example, if we look at the Ballysillam one that Stuart mentioned earlier, um, some of our initial designs that we've looked at in terms of the um, the, the fluvial, the, the, the river flooding event, um, with the attenuation we hope to build into that, we can, we think, um, contain the one in 100 year event uh, within the, uh, the works that we're proposing within the playing phase. But we don't think we'd be able to mitigate for any climate change in the future as part of that at, at our initial design stage. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to um, develop that a bit more and look at other areas in the upper catchment that would help mitigate those um, the increases due to, to climate change. Um, but it's worth noting that this isn't just a flood risk management plan. This is uh, an integrated approach to drainage and wastewater management. Uh, I think one of the questions I see in the chat box as well was about the Fourth River uh, and whether in the corridor and whether it was just looking at um, I've lost it now, uh, just looking at whether it was uh, uh, the river flood risk or whether it was working at, at the, the sewage capacity. Um, it was everything. It was trying to look at this in a holistic manner uh, to try and identify where the flooding issues are, what's causing them by using, you know, doing a root cause analysis of it, uh, and then looking at the opportunities to solve each of those problems in an integrated way. So solving the flooding issue uh, by attenuating in the green space, uh, whether that's flooding issue coming out of a water course or a flooding issue that's caused by excess stormwater in the combined sewage system, uh, leading to internal property uh, flooding, uh, and looking at a holistic approach to it rather than just the, the, the flooding issue and trying to bring in those growth aspects as well to provide the capacity within the system. I think David, like the, the approach you've taken is, is to treat water as water and it's it's all coming from the same place in the start and then it's how we're, uh, our existing systems, network, natural river systems are overwhelmed or not able to cope with it. And like you say, then deal with it in an integrated manner so it uh, solves potentially many problems or contributes to solving many problems. Um, very good. Um... 
Last, I like the the whole the joint up thinking and the integrated approach. But Ed, do you think that you'll be able to get everyone in ba Belfast aligned to this way of thinking to actually uh, make this uh, plan a success? Well, certainly from a DFI point of view, I see a question here which is probably linked to this around the integrated appraisal guidance that we're, we're trying to develop. Um, certainly from a DFI point of view, we want to be preparing business cases in the future which are are basically DFI that covers rivers, roads, northern Ireland water, um, to try to, you know, in terms of the benefits. Uh, traditionally, each of the drainage organisations have quite rightly, if I can understand, have focused on the, you know, the, the benefits that relate to the to the to those organisations. So um work at the, the see the question there in terms of, you know, interested in know more about the, the work that we're taking forward. It's in the early stages, um, but uh, certainly everybody around the tables is supportive of, of, of the direction of travel. Um, it will be, you know, hopefully we get to the stage where anything that's being delivered, any expenditure that's being delivered through the Limerick Water Programme, will the business cases that sit, sit, that sit behind that, will have been done in an integrated way. Um, in terms of wider than ourselves, um, we have a number of key partners obviously working with us in the Limerick Water Programme, and that includes the councils. Um, who are very important national. We've also got the we've worked closely with the National Trust housing executive, so you know we, we do have a number of a number of uh, key partners already working with us. Uh, no, very good. Um, I think uh, I think we'll call it at that. If that's okay with you all, um, we could be here all night if we don't um, if we don't fall back on questions. But um, just a couple of closing remarks again. Um, you've mentioned the consultation is open and there's uh, there's details of how you can respond and I'd encourage everyone on this call to, to provide that uh, feedback uh, and I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Uh, just a quick note of thanks to you all, to Stuart and to David and of course Richard. Uh, very, very informative uh, presentation and some really, really nice uh, visuals and getting that clear message across. Um, I'm sure I, I'm if we were in Malone House right now, everyone would be clapping. So well done, guys. Uh, and thank you, of course, for, for taking the time to actually present to us tonight. So in terms of any upcoming events, uh, you'll note there on the chat box that I've said that all of our upcoming events will be posted on our LinkedIn page, uh, SIWEM Northern Ireland branch, and on Twitter, SIWEM underscore NI. So we'll be keeping that updated regularly. And of course, you'll get the emails as well if you're a member of SIWEM. So the next two events uh, will be in January 2021. Uh, so the first up is our joint technical event with the ICE on the 11th of January. So it's uh, this schedule will be hosted by ICE and it, it's intended that we'll have a live debate on climate change. So that's worth tuning into. That'll be uh, on the ICE system. And then the second event in 2021 will be uh, presented by uh, past chairman Warren Bowl of AMI on the 21st of January. So his talk will be a lunchtime presentation, their second in, in the lunchtime webinar our series and that will be on the second cycle of Northern Ireland Flood Risk Management Plan 2021 to 2027. So as I say, all of our events are free to attend, but essential is booking. So keep an eye on our LinkedIn page and uh, on our Twitter page to keep to keep up to date with all of the events that are going on. Um, I think that's all from us folks, but listen, thank you all for coming out and thank you to our speakers again. Uh, we'll wrap it at that and uh, stay thank safe you, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.